it's so innovative and necessary in an area that has such agricultural abundance to bring farmers in on this discussion, to hear their needs, to bring the chefs in and have the chefs share their concerns and their needs, and to see them shake hands and eat that food together that the farmers brought to the table uh, was a really exciting moment. The two most important parts of the food system really are the people who grow the food on one hand and the people who consume it or eat it on the other. And in modern systems, the distance between those two has become so great that the two have no idea, no understanding, no recognition of who the other is. Farmers don't know where their food goes, and consumers don't know where their food comes from. And when we start putting those two back together again, one supports the other. If you look in the heart of where the Green Revolution was meant to, to work best, in Punjab, in northern India, um, an area that was the breadbasket of India, well, you'll find now that farmer suicides are through the roof, um, that there's tremendous amounts of poverty because farmers can't continue to afford to, to throw chemicals at the, at the soil because the, the returns from adding more chemicals to the soil now are negligible. Uh, the soil has been utterly destroyed by these fertilizers and pesticides that once promised so much. Millions upon millions of small farmers who have very low external input systems for farming, farm very well and with yields which are comparable to the best green revolution yields in peasant farming systems, who are ecologically and environmentally and economically resilient to all the shocks which the food system receives um, and who should be supported. Uh, we need to get people back on the land, not out of agriculture, back into agriculture. And I think that the best hope for food and fuel systems in the future are to get small and mid-sized farmers back on the land producing sustainably. Um, that way we'll cool the planet down and feed ourselves. One of the biggest problems that modern agriculture has is it really doesn't feed the soil. It only feeds the plant with chemical fertilizers, with artificial inputs, with extra water, all of the things that are added to the system, rather than feeding the soil and building a strong, living soil system and agroecosystem within which agriculture takes place. Agroecology is not about a monoculture. It's not about fossil fuels or large inputs or, or you know, massive land holdings. Um, agroecology produces a great deal from a very small amount of land because it, pr it produces a pluriculture uh, and it works with the seasons and it's not geared towards the economic dictates that the World Bank or the IMF are providing. Um, instead, it's geared towards producing what works in, in a particular environment uh, and works with a particular ecology to produce a range of crops that, are, that range from um, food crops to fiber crops to fuel crops um, to crops that, that provide ecosystemic services um, and a, a range of products that aren't necessarily uh, those with a, a high export dollar value but which are nonetheless vital to a community. Under the current conventional system, you know, there is a lot of money to be made and that's where the investment's being made. But I think if we bring together our knowledge of carbon footprints, of healthy soil, of healthy communities, of the close relationship between the people who grow the food and eat the food, those investors are going to find out that maybe they should also consider investing locally, investing in the future of healthy soil, you know, doing things that promote sustainability in the long term. You know, and, and by doing so, you might be able to consider their investments to be Gosh, I guess you could call them green investments uh, that, that are not only investments in the return, but the future.